Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at the foreign key. I'm going to show you all four types. You're going to know when to use them and how to use them. You will become the go-to person for foreign keys. Let's do this. When we are talking about foreign keys, we're normally talking about a parent-child relationship. Notice in my parent table, I have two columns. Notice a very simple table. One is solid, two liquid, three is gas. Very easy to understand. Let's create that. Now our child table is where things start to get complicated. Notice that we can create a foreign key on the matter column, and that will point up to matter ID in the parent. So when we create a foreign key constraint, notice the foreign key matter ID references the table called parent matter ID. Now notice here on update and on delete it's cascade. Now what does cascade mean? That means when the parent data is either updated or deleted, the child data is either updated or deleted. In this video I'm going to give you demonstrations on this and how it works so you understand it completely. Our tables have been created. Parent is the top, child is the bottom. Foreign keys say I cannot put a column, I mean a value into this table that does not exist in this table. And what makes a good foreign key? Well, let's look at the rules. First rule, the data types have to be the same. Notice matter is an integer, matter here is an integer. Okay, it passes the first test. Now the column names don't matter. The second thing is, when from this table to the parent table, I have to point at a primary key or a unique key, something that makes this row unique. Here I'm using a primary key, but I could have came down here and said create unique index on matter ID and that would work as well. In our first example, I'm going to insert into the child table and I'm going to put in 1040, 1, solid as a rock. 1, the matter ID, does it exist here? Yes, this should be successful. In our second, I'm going to try to insert there and notice that I'm using 4. Does 4 exist in here? No, it does not. This will fail. Let's execute both of these statements. So that was success, and this one failed. Notice, solid as a rock. Because there is a cascade rule between our foreign key, notice when I say delete from parent where matter equals one, well, let's understand this. When the parent data is either updated or deleted, the child data is either updated or deleted. Notice I'm deleting from the parent where matter is one. Let's do that. Let's look at our data. And notice one was removed from parent and one was removed from the child. Let's look at our next example. Let's look at the data. Notice that we have one, two, three. And then in our child table, we have ones, twos, and threes. Here I'm saying update parent, set matter ID to four, where matter ID equals one. So you see this one? I'm gonna turn that into a four. What does Cascade say? When the parent data is either updated or deleted, the child data is updated. I'm gonna change these to four as well all in one command. Let's do this. Execute. Let's look at our data. Notice in the parent, one is now four, and it had updated our child table as well. And there you have the cascade foreign key. In this second example, I'm going to create two tables to support a foreign key of type set null on the update and delete commands. Notice that we still have our parent-child relationship. Our parent table, two columns, you can remember the data. Now in our second one, we're going to create that child and notice I'm going to create a foreign key constraint on matter ID. Notice matter ID integer not null. Well, I want to be able to set that value to null so we can't use not null. If I tried to execute this, this will create an error. Notice it's saying, um, I can't do that because it's not nullable. So to get this to work, what we have to do is come and say, remove the not null. And then when we make the foreign key on matter, notice update set null, delete set null, everything will work appropriately. 
then I will do my inserts and notice I'm inserting nulls and we're ready to go. In our first example, I'm going to update the child. I'm going to set matter ID as one where item ID is 40, 20, 40, 30. Notice right now it's null. Let's do that. Let's show you the output and notice it got updated correctly. Let's roll that back and do one more test. In this example, I'm going to be updating matter ID to four. Now looking at parent, do you see four? No, you don't. Therefore, this is going to create an error. Let's do it. And that is our error. Four does not exist. Let's roll that back. Our foreign key is set null. Let's remember what that is. When the parent data is either updated or deleted, the child data is set to null. Notice here I'm saying update parent set matter to four where matter is one. So see this one? I want to turn that into a four. So this is saying, hey, when you, if you do that, then the child data will be set to null. Notice we have all these ones. They should be updated to null. Let's see that work. Ready? Execute. See our data. Notice the one turned into a four and all our ones turn into null. Let's roll back and look at our second test. Delete from parent where matter ID equals one. We're going to remove this. Removing it will then set these to null. That is what set null is all about. Let's execute this. Execute. Show the data. One is gone. The one values here are now set to null. In this third example, we're going to create two tables to support a foreign key of type no action on both the update and the delete. Notice that our table parent has the same three rows. And then on our table where we're going to create a foreign key, notice that we have matter ID. Matter will then point to parent and notice on the update and the delete statements, no action. Now what does no action mean? Well, when the parent data is either updated or deleted, no action is performed on the child data. Let's create this table and I'll meet you in the unit test. In our first example, notice that I am going to update parent. I'm going to set matter ID equals four where matter ID is one. Notice one is here. But in a foreign key, these are in a relationship. One is to these ones, two to these twos. I just can't come in here and change that value, especially when we're using no action. This right here will fail. Let's see what happens. Notice it fails. There is no four there. In this example, remember our foreign key is of type no action. I'm going to say insert into child where matter ID is four. If I come look at my matter, notice there is no four. This will fail exactly as we intended. In our next example, I went back to the parent and I dropped those tables. And now notice that in my child, I now make it nullable on a no action. Let's see how this behaves. In the example we'll use, we'll say update child set matter ID is null where the item ID is 10, 20, 10, 30. Notice 10, 20, 10, 30. Right now it's set at one. I'm going to say be null. Let's execute this and see our data and notice everything is fine. In our last example of foreign keys of type set default for the update and delete command, notice in my parent, I have a new option for reserved. Now, what does that mean? Well, notice that on matter int not null default for, this for has to exist for this technology to work. Notice I'm creating a foreign key on matter and it will reference parent dot matter. So this four has to exist for this to work. Let's create our tables and load the data and I'll meet you in the unit test. Select star from the data. Notice that we have one through four and notice on our first test, we're going to say delete from parent where matter ID is one. Notice, see this solid? I want to remove that. 
but one is a foreign key to child. And notice here, we have a bunch of ones. The rule says, if the parent is updated or deleted, the child will get the default value. Remember, we set the default value to four. Let's run that and see what happens. Notice the value is four and one has been deleted. In our final example, notice that we have one through four in our parent, and then we have one through three in our child table. Notice I'm gonna say update the parent. Set matter ID as five where matter is one. So you see this one, I'm gonna set it to five. And then notice here, I have a foreign key between these values. This thing's saying, hey, default it to the default value if I make changes to this. So notice here, I'm gonna send it to five. These should go to four. Let's see that work. So it went to five and notice these went to the default value. So that foreign key behaved appropriately. And there you have the last foreign key. And there you have foreign keys. There were four different rules. That is very complicated. So if you are the only database administrator at your company, please don't wear all the risk. Get other people to help you to review your work. Choosing the wrong one can be very problematic, especially like on that cascade with deleting. Can you imagine that wiping out your whole database? So make sure you choose the right one, the rule that supports your business. Yep, so there you have it. So I appreciate your support by subscribing to my channel, uh, sending me comments through email and comments below, and giving me thumbs up. Appreciate that. I look forward to seeing you and seeing you back in my next video. Have a great week.